everyone. Welcome to WSC2 Identity Server Access Delegation with Uma training video. In this video, we are going to discuss Uma Access Delegation features supported by WSC2 Identity Server. Let's begin by understanding what Access Delegation is. With Access Delegation, you can authorize someone else to access your resources on your behalf. It enables you to permit an entity to view, edit, and delete resources based on the need. These permissions can also be easily revoked to prevent data compromise. To understand access delegation a bit more, let's take a few examples. Let's say you want to stop the newspaper being delivered on the days that you are not at home. You can do this by sharing restricted view of your calendar with the newspaper company so that they can prevent newspaper delivery on the days that you are not at home. Similarly, consider a situation where your job requires you to travel abroad frequently. Each time you travel, you have to request your credit card company to whitelist your credit card transactions. Instead, you can use UMA to share your calendar with restricted access to the credit card company. The credit card company in turn will automatically whitelist your transactions whenever you go abroad. Now that you know the importance of access delegation, let us explore about user-managed access, commonly known as UMA. UMA is an oath-based access management protocol approved by Kantra Initiative. It enables party-to-party -party sharing, which lets users grant control resource access to a third-party subject using well-defined authorization policies. UMA has five types of rules, namely resource owner, client application, authorization server, resource server, and requesting party. The resource owner holds a user account in an application and owns certain resources stored in that application. For example, John Doe has a user account in the photo storage application called Memory Lane. In some cases, the resource owner can also be a non-human entity treated as a person for limited legal purposes such as a corporation. The client application is a web or mobile application that can access your resources on your behalf. For example, John Doe uses a photo editing application called FaceMaker to access the photos stored in Memory Lane application and edit them. Here, FaceMaker application acts as the client application. The authorization server authenticates resource owners using their credentials. Some popular authorization servers are Facebook and Google. The resource server stores all the actual resources. The Memory Lane application also acts as a resource server. Dropbox, Google Drive, and Facebook are some popular resource servers. The requesting party is a natural or legal party using a client application to seek access to a protected resource. The requesting party may or may not be the same party as the resource owner. If John Doe has shared his photo collection with Jane Doe, Jane will act as the requesting party when she attempts to access these photos. Let's look at a sample scenario in detail to get a clearer understanding. Let's extend our example where John Doe wants third parties to gain control access to his photographs. First, John Doe, the resource owner, should access the resource server and get authenticated. In this scenario, the resource server is the memory lane application that stores John's photos. Memory lane will use WSO2 identity server, which acts as the authorization server to authenticate the user. Once authenticated, John Doe will register a photo album and configure access control policies that will be applicable to parties willing to access the photo album. Next, Jane Doe, the requesting party, attempts to access the client application called FaceMaker in order to access John Doe's photos that are stored in Memory Lane. The FaceMaker application will use WSO2 Identity Server, which acts as the authorization server, to authenticate the requesting party. 
After authentication, Jen tries to access John's photo album and the FaceMaker application invokes the Memory Lane application. Next, the Memory Lane application obtains a ticket from authorization server and passes it to the FaceMaker application. The FaceMaker application sends this ticket to the authorization server and gets a token in return. Next, FaceMaker application attempts to access the protected resource by providing this token. The memory lane application validates the token by passing it to the authorization server. During the authorization, the policies that were configured earlier will be evaluated against the token request. Once the validation is successful, Jane gains access to the memory lane resources. We have now come to an end of this training video. Let's have a quick recap of what we have learned in this training. First, we got to know the purpose of access delegation. Next, we learned about UMA rules and how each rule interacts with each other for access delegation through a sample scenario. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is im-dev at wso2.org. In Stack Overflow, tag with WSO2 or WSO2IS. And our Slack channel is WSO2IS.slack.com. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to meet you in another exciting training video.